Hi, today I'll be reading Your Star, Jane Goodall, written by Dean Robbins and illustrated by Hatim Ali. You are a star, Jane Goodall. So if you don't know, Jane Goodall is a, Dr. Jane Goodall is a scientist who has lived and studied, lived with and studied the chimpanzees. Help! I came to Tanzania to live among the chimpanzees. I wanted to be the first scientist to see them eat, play, and raise their families in the wilderness. So far, I am failing. The chimps keep running away from me. When I followed them up a mountain, they disappeared over the peak. How did I get in this mess? Believe it or not, it all started with a fuzzy little toy. I love chimpanzees ever since my father gave me Jubilee for my first birthday. So there's Jane at her first birthday. That's her baby chimp. Real chimpanzees are just as cute, but much harder to cuddle. Chimps are us. Chimpanzees are closely related to humans, so learning about them helps us learn about ourselves. Before my experiment in the wilderness, people had mostly studied them in laboratories or zoos. No one knew how they acted in their real homes because scientists were scared to go near them. Chimps are only four feet tall, but they're three times stronger than we are. I grew up in England with animals all around me. I played with a cat named Pickles and snails named Alice and Andy. I even taught a robin to hop through the bedroom window and eat breadcrumbs off my blanket. To learn more about the natural world, I read books while sitting high up in a tree. Stories of faraway Africa made me dream of working there as a scientist. Could a girl like me really have such an exciting job? My mother thought so. She said I could do anything if I tried. I collected a handful of earthworms from our garden. I decided my bed was the perfect place for them to live. Yikes, it looks like Jane's mom is not pleased about this. Good old Rusty. My best friend growing up was a smart black spaniel named Rusty. He taught me that animals have their own thoughts and feelings. Would you believe that Rusty loved wearing clothes? I dressed him in pajamas and wheeled him around our street in a baby carriage. Aww. I would love to do that for our pooches. I started the alligator club with my sister and two friends. We wore special badges and packed our animal names, picked animal names for ourselves. I was Red Admirable, named after a bright butterfly. The others were Puffin, Ladybird, and Trout. We made careful notes about all the plants and animals in our town. It was good practice for studying wildlife in Africa. And here's Jane. I created an alligator club magazine with articles, drawings, and quizzes about animals. Can you answer these questions? What is a baby cat called? Who knows what a baby cat is? Yes, a kitten. And how about this one? Name five animals with tails. Oof, fish, dog, cat, squirrel. Maybe you can think of some more. The Toadstool Museum. The Alligator Club made a na nature museum for our neighbors. They paid to see our collection of seashells, feathers, and toadstools, and we gave the money to a charity for old horses. I was glad to help animals in need. I hoped to study science, but I couldn't afford to go to college. Instead, I worked as a secretary and waitress in learned about animals during my free time. When a letter came from, from Kayo, an old friend who had moved to Kenya on the east coast of Africa, she asked if I wanted to visit her there. I did, but where would I get the money for a trip? So here she is, she saved all her money from work and hid it under the carpet. And when the budget grew big enough, I knew I could pay for my trip to Kenya. Bring your hamster to work. Even during work, I couldn't stop thinking about animals. Luckily, my boss let me bring in my pet hamster 
Hamlet who kept me company at my desk. And there it is. <laughs> my ship sailed down the Atlantic Ocean, up the Indian Ocean, and let me off in Mombasa, Kenya. Being in Africa was the thrill of my life. Chloe showed me monkeys and spring books running free. She also told me about a scientist who knew everything about animals, Louis Leakey. I took a chance and visited him in the city of Nairobi. Nairobi. We liked each other right away, chatting about snakes, fish, and antelope. Dr. Leakey saw how much I loved wildlife and offered me a job. My dream of studying animals in Africa was coming true. I began working in the wild with Dr. Leakey, but my long hair kept getting in the way. I pulled it back with a rubber band for my new look as a scientist. Hello, ponytail. Yeah, hey, I wear a ponytail sometimes. Meet the mongoose. I immediately started a collection of African pets. A baby bush baby named Levi slept under my shirt. A monkey named Combo and a mongoose named Kip played together in my room. A fox named Chimba rested by my feet, and a parakeet named Tango hopped around my head. Dr. Leakey told me about a magical place where chimpanzees roamed the forest, mountains, and valleys. It was a rugged part of Africa, now called Gombe National Park, in the country of Tanzania. He wondered if a person could live among the chimps to study their habitat, their habits. No scientist had ever done such a thing. Dr. Leakey asked if I knew anyone brave enough to try it. I did. I think she's talking about herself. Dr. Leakey explained that it would be hard to live in the wilderness with deadly animals, a dangerous landscape, and little to eat. I couldn't wait. A different sort of scientist. I had no scientific training, so it was risky to choose me for this experiment. But Dr. Leakey was excited to find a curious explorer who had never researched chimpanzees. He knew I might try things no one had ever thought of before. My sister and I set up our tents at the edge of a clear blue lake. I headed into the forest, fighting through the thick brush to observe the chimpanzees. For months, I had no luck. I tried watching the chimps from far away, but leaves and branches blocked my view. I tried hiding near them, but they ran off as soon as they saw me. I needed a completely different approach, but what? I wasn't scared of baboons, crocodiles, or other ferocious beasts in Gombe. But when a leopard growled near my tent, I pulled a blanket over my head. Oof, I'm not sure I could do that. My biggest fan, you'll never guess who joined me for the first few months in Gombe, my mother. She brought beans for us to eat, tea for us to drink, and medicine for people in nearby villages. Mom was so happy to see me working where I'd always wanted to be. Then it hit me. I could, could stop hiding from the chimpanzees. After all, humans and chimps are both from the same primate family. Why shouldn't we like each other? I sat at a safe distance and acted the way they did. I scratched my side. I dug for insects. If they seemed scared of me, I pretended to sleep. One day, a chimp with silver hair on his chin looked me up and down. I called him David Graybeard and wondered if we could be friends. I watched the chimps build leafy nests for sleeping way up in the treetops. When they left their nets for the day, I tried lying in one myself. So comfortable. So there's Jane and David. David Graybeard. You can see his gray beard. Names or numbers. Scientists who studied chimpanzees always called them by numbers. Chimp number one, chimp number two, chimp number three. That's because no one thought these animals had real personalities, but I could see they had their own thoughts and feelings, just like humans. So I showed my respect by giving them names like David, Flo, and Goliath. I would rather be named person name than a number any day. David Graybeard could see that I was nice. He liked having me around and the other chimps followed his lead. All of a sudden I could watch them up close. 
Babies rode on their mother's backs, friends tickled each other, teenagers showed off. I sat quietly for hours, taking notes on everything they did. Maybe I would make a great discovery. During a storm, a chimpanzee ran up a hill waving a stick. That started a giant party I called a rain dance. My chimpanzee family. I came to know the chimps as well as I knew my mother, father, and sister. Flo took good care of her babies, Fifi and Fegan. Everin played gently with his younger sister, Gilka. Goliath always made a fuss, banging on trees and shaking branches. He and David Greybeard chased each other in circles and fell over laughing. One day, I spotted David Greybeard sitting on a mound. He broke off a twig, stripped its leaves, and poked it into a hole. When he pulled it out, wriggling insects clung to the twig. He nibbled them off one by one. To my surprise, David had made a tool. Finally, my great discovery. It meant that chimps were more like humans than anyone knew. I couldn't wait to tell the whole world. This is one of the biggest discoveries there. Want to know my secret to learning what chimps eat in the wild? Studying their poop. Another huge discovery. David Greybeard also showed me that chimpanzees like meat. Scientists thought they ate only plants and insects, but I saw him hunt the same way humans do. Thanks for the help, David. Luckily, I knew all about writing articles from my days in the Alligator Club. This time, I wrote about the chimpanzees of Gombe for a famous magazine. Readers couldn't believe I had fearlessly lived with them in the wild. Scientists couldn't believe a woman with no training had made such important discoveries. I had become the world's top expert on chimps. Dr. Leakey was proud of me. My family was too. Everyone wondered what I would do next. The magazine sent a photographer named Hugo von Lewick to film and picture, take pictures of me with the chimpanzees. We fell in love and got married. Back to school. I left Gombe for Cambridge University in England. I had always wanted to study science and working for Dr. Leakey helped me pay for college, but I tried to finish as fast as possible to get back to my chimpanzee friends in the wilderness. I hope to turn my small camp in Gombe into a major research center. I also hope to have a child. Hugo and I welcomed a baby boy and nicknamed him Grub after one of the chimps. Grub adored animals as much as I did. He grew up watching hyenas stroll past our tent. How could I make the world a better place for him and every other living thing? I learned about being a good mother from chimpanzees like Flo. She showed me how to protect my child and how to play with him. From a tent to a team, I founded the Gombe Stream Research Center to continue my work with wildlife. It grew into a large operation with staff from Tanzania and other countries. Can you believe it all started with my little tent on the edge of the lake? In my 50s, I set off on my biggest adventure to protect people, wildlife, and the earth. I traveled from country to country with a message of love. We must be kind to one another and to the planet we live on. Do you know why? I wish I could introduce children to the Gombe chimpanzees in person, but I can't bring them on my trips so I can bring my toy chimps instead. Saving the world. We can all make a difference if we try. Young people in my organization, Roots and Shoots, work hard to solve problems for humans, animals, forests, and oceans. What problems do you see where you live? What can you do to help? I always remember why when I return to Gombe. The chimpanzees are beautiful. The valleys and streams are beautiful. You are beautiful too. We must all live together peacefully to preserve our beautiful world. Young people give me hope for the future. So do you, chimps. I love chimps. The chimpanzees and I have known each other for many years. I have watched them grow from babies to teenagers to parents to grandparents. They have watched me grow too. There's nothing sweeter than going back to Gombe to spend time with my dear friends. And there's a little author's note. Some things about Jane and the chimps.
all of her books and books that she's written. And then there's a timeline also you can check out.